There is a pre-existing creative force in nature, right? You can see it. You know, acorns become oak trees. Um, you know, sperm and eggs become humans, or what other animal does the sperm and egg thing? Um, that's a, I don't want to get too technical on y'all. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, it, it, it is life begets life. Our relationship with that force is what we call our creativity. It's what we call creativity. And the nature of that force is it always creates something from nothing. It is the, the transition from the formless, pre-existent energy of life, whatever way we think about that, that which is really difficult to articulate because an articulation is already a form. So how do you describe something that is not yet existent? Because you bring it into existence as you describe it. But language is what we got, right? But whatever that energy is, that transition from formless to form, which is natural, it is in all, it is throughout nature, there is no reason to believe that it would not be part of human nature as well. How we relate to that, come on in, is creativity. And so the more we can see about that natural journey from formless to form, or that shift in form, what we would call transformation, where something goes from one form to another, that's our creativity. And there are sort of historical relationships that creative people, i.e. people that think of themselves as creative or that society labels as creative, have to that force. And one of the classics is the muse. The muse and the supplicant, right? So the artist, the creative, is a supplicant to the muse, to the divine, and tries to have such a relationship with the divine, to be so in love, to be so appreciative, to be so um, pleasing to the divine that the divine will grace it, will grace you with an idea, with a thought, with a painting, with a sculpture, with a poem, with a song, with a new idea for your business, with whatever it is, right? That's one of the traditional relationships that people have. Another is people, um, and I don't know exactly what you'd call this, but they, they think of the creative force as something that they can call forth. Sort of like um, uh, Lear, you know, uh, evoking the winds. Blow winds and crack your chest. Like, like that somehow through our intent, we can call forth this creative energy and bring it into being and summon it and work with it. And you've got to be careful, right? If you've ever seen Mickey Mouse in The Sorcerer's Apprentice, try and, <laughs> try and, try and mess with this. It can get out of hand, right? But, but that that's another relationship that we have. It. It's this thing that we can invoke and evoke and do something. Some people have the relationship of a dancer to a piece of music. Nietzsche said, those who danced were thought insane by those who could not hear the music. Well, we hear a music. We hear a music from somewhere beyond, from somewhere outside of our normal thinking. And we dance in response to it. We dance with our pen. We dance with our word. We dance with our, 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 our paintbrush. We dance with a dance to the music that we hear. It isn't that one of these is right or wrong, but there has always been a relationship throughout time between the creator, the creative person, and some force that they either believe to be beyond them 
within them, natural to them or foreign to them. But there's always a relationship between creator and creative force. And that's what I'm suggesting we use as a working definition for creativity during our time together.